Welcome to Storytime from Space, a project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. Hi, and welcome to the International Space Station. This is the Cupola. My name is Ricky Arnold, an astronaut on the International Space Station, and I'm here for Storytime in Space, or for story, story Time from Space. And above me is, uh, we just passed over, we're actually going through the Caribbean right now on the way to the Atlantic Ocean. And we'll be over in Europe in a few minutes. And while we're traveling, I thought we could share this story, Oscar and Klaus, the mission to Kataria. Written by Mick and Travis, and illustrated by Alexander. Let's start. Klaus was startled awake by a zip and a zoom. Oscar, stop running around the room. Just let me sleep like a proper house cat. The job of a cat is to nap and get fat. Oscar giggled. Come on, Klaus. It's time to play. You snooze all night and then most of the day. Can't you see the world is a thrilling place? And beyond our planet, there's outer space. Klaus snarled, why be awake if I can't look my best? I need 10 more hours of beauty rest. Just then, a man on TV with a unique accent was describing an abnormal cosmic event. An asteroid will pass between Earth and the moon, and it's going to happen very soon. We must probe the mysteries of the cosmos, declared space pioneer Alan Probos. He was the founder of CAT, or Cosmic Adventure Technologies. We'll call it CAT. Will we discover life when we get there? Probus ran his fingers through his wild hair. Is such a thing even possible on a minor dwarf planet that's so small? Our plan is to land on this odd planetoid. Two brave volunteers will be deployed. So if you love adventure, don't delay. We'll start training cadets right away. This time I think you've gone too far, grumbled Klaus to Oscar. Well, let me start that part again. <laughs> this time I think you've gone too far, Klaus grumbled to Oscar in the back of the car. As the cat buildings came into view, Klaus shouted, I will not be a part of this crew. Oscar smiled. You said it's your dream to be by the stars. It's, it's not like we're going all the way to Mars. Klaus snapped back. I meant the stars you would find in Hollywood, not the outer space kind. Probos mused, I did not expect cats, but no one else came, so that is that. The plan is quite simple, so let me explain. Your track is demanding, so you must train to strengthen your body and sharpen your mind, and it's no trouble at all that Oscar is blind. With courage and a positive disposition, you'll have the right stuff to serve on this mission. Oscar agreed. We're ready to start. Let's learn the new skills before we depart. Oscar was introduced to a robot named Yuri, who stood on one wheel on which he would scurry. Probos smiled. Here's your sample collector, the yellow, unidentified rock inspector, Yuri. His job is to handle any hazardous matter. As he said this, Yuri started to chatter. It's my pleasure to lend you my helping hand. Just say okay, Yuri, followed by your command. In spite of his huffing, wheezing, and straining, Klaus somehow kept up with all of the training. The centrifuge spun like a big round, of, like a big roundabout, to prepare him for blastoff, so he wouldn't pass out. Each training day started at 6 a.m. They would get a small break around 9 or 10. They would train some more until 3, get fed, and again until 7, then go straight to bed. That sounds hard. Preparations were made down to every detail. Each control panel button was labeled in braille. As launch day approached, their skills were perfected. The rocket was loaded, fueled, and inspected. Klaus begged, I will need my fizzy water machine. Oscar allowed it to avoid causing a scene. Yuri reported, pre-flight check is done. Our journey commences in four, three, two, one. Blast off. 
The rocket ship left Earth with startling power, reaching 17.5 thousand miles per hour, which is how fast we're going right now. On board was a plexiglass storage box designed to protect the sample rocks. Also a plan to remind them of, of home. It sat in a small transparent dome. Lastly, the machine that carbonates water, since Klaus insists bubbly water tastes better. Do you agree with him? I do. I can't believe we're actually flying through space, Oscar, Oscar exclaimed, a huge grin on his face. I feel like my body weighs nothing at all. Klaus, Klaus gasped as they orbited in a state of free fall. I can do that one again, too. I can't believe we're actually flying through space, Oscar exclaimed, a huge grin on his face. I feel like my body weighs nothing at all. Klaus gasped as they orbited in a state of free fall. When the asteroid finally came into view, every crew member knew just what to do. Oscar and Klaus put on their special space suits along with their helmets and grippy space boots. Exploring the asteroid, they felt strange sensations. Oscar detected puzzling vibrations. Klaus saw colorful, flickering beams of light that sped through the cracked surface seams. Okay, Yuri, Oscar ordered. You're ordered. Retrieve a rock sample. Yuri squawked back. I'll select the finest example. Beep, bloop, blurp, beep. Ten minutes went by, and just as expected, Yuri returned with the lump he collected. The jagged green fragment was placed in a box designed to protect mysterious space rocks. Moments later, it started to pulse and gleam with an eerie light that frightened the team. Crack. Oh, heaven, screamed Klaus as he started to pant. The sample was taking control of the plant. The shrub broke its container, and when it was free, quadrupled in size with incredible speed. The sh ship's electronics were going haywire. The whole situation went from bad to dire. Mission Control heard all of the mayhem. Both cats were shouting, We have a problem! As Oscar and Klaus grew much more and more frantic. I better read that one again. As, as Oscar and Klaus grew more and more frantic, the shrub grew from big to huge to gigantic. There was only one thing the vines were after. They wanted more food. CO2, or carbon dioxide, and water. They squeezed the liquid out of Klaus's fizz bottles and soaked it all up along with the bubbles. Nobody could stop it. And although they, although they tried, the weed absorbed all the carbon dioxide. We need to escape this grotesquely glutton, Klaus panicked and hit the eject now button. Whoosh! Total chaos broke out right after ejection. The objects on board went in every direction. The escape pod shot up and floated away. Yuri snagged Klaus as they drifted away. The plant froze and shattered. Chunks scattered around. Soon Oscar and the rock were nowhere to be found. Klaus and Yuri kept coasting through the infinite void, by now miles away from that weird asteroid. Okay, Yuri, sobbed Klaus. We should sing a song. It might give us courage and help us stay, stay strong. Yuri agreed. This is a very good plan. I'll load the music as soon as I can. Beep, bloop, blurp, bleep. When your mind is full of fears and you feel like shedding tears, don't lose your head. Just use your head. When your heart is losing hope and you don't know how to cope, don't lose your head. You got to use your head. Bleep. Bippity bloop, shoopity doop, wah. Klaus held on to Yuri in a desperate embrace, singing as they sailed into the depths of space. Back on Earth, thousands of miles away, Mission Control's nerves started to fray. Probos blurted, in my expert opinion, the odds of survival are one in 10 billion. As these hopeless words discouraged the team, a fuzzy face appeared on the video screen as incoming transmission. Oscar cut through the static, beating every odd. He was sending a message from the escape pod. I'm in a capsule. Although I'm alone, I'll find the others. We're all coming home. 
Completely lost, still floating along, Yuri and Klaus finished their lonesome song. I'm shutting down, Yuri wheezed. My battery is spent. I'm down to 0.01%. Klaus sobbed. Dearest Yuri, I have to confess, I'm glad you were with me during this mess. And just as Klaus gave up any chance of rescue, a glimmer of hope whisked into view. Oscar! Oscar's Paul reached out to grab his best friend to at last bring their troubles to an end. Am I seeing things, gasped Klaus? Could it really be? How in the world did you ever find me? Once all three were on board and Klaus ate some treats, Oscar described his bold rescue feats. When our ship fell apart, I stretched out my claws and snagged the CO2 tank between my paws. A button on the nozzle created a blast. The compressed gas made me move fast. The escape pod's transmission perked up my ear. As the sound got louder, I knew where to steer. Once I boarded the craft, I honed in on your song. Your broadcast level was still quite strong. That's how you found me, Klaus West wept joyful tears. I was saved by singing in your well-trained ears. The end of the voyage was drawing near as the capsule blazed through the Earth's atmosphere. It shumbled, rumbled, and sh I'll do that one again too, it shumbled. <laughs> the end of the voyage was drawing near as the capsule blazed through Earth's atmosphere. It rumbled and shook like an amusement, amusement park ride but that didn't alarm the brave spirits inside. As dark black space gave way to bright blue skies, Oscar revealed a glowing surprise. I saved that extraterrestrial chunk and stowed it inside this cargo's, this craft's cargo trunk. Probo sat down by his new alien rock. He and his cat were in for a shock. Once again, the element started to grow. It caused his, the hair on his head to grow and grow. He was actually delighted by a, the shaggy mess. The mission to Kataria was a huge success. Outside, voices cheered and a marching band played. The return, returning heroes were thrown a parade. Oscar and Klaus felt encouraged as they drove away to live the life they wanted every single day. And this book was dedicated to the many brave animal space explorers who paved the way for Oscar and Klaus. Here are a few. 1949, Albert II, a rhesus monkey, was the first monkey in space. Laika uh, was 1957, was the first animal to go around the world in orbit. 1961, Ham and Enos were the first primates in space. And in 1963, Felicity was the first cat in space. So thanks for taking some time and uh, sharing this wonderful story with me. Sorry, the cover is a little dark, but you get to see this beautiful planet behind us. And in the time we shared this story, we've traveled almost entirely across the Atlantic Ocean and we'll be coming across Europe pretty soon. Uh, thanks for joining me and uh, hope you enjoyed the book. Bye now. Thank you for joining us for Storytime from Space. We hope you enjoyed our story today from the International Space Station. We hope you'll join us again soon for another book reading or for one of our science experiments. Until next time, we look forward to reading together again soon.